Hey guys, uh, Peter Moran, uh, Stage 3 Rides here. Jordan's not able to make it. He's working on actually something new that will be coming out soon. I really can't tell you what that is, uh, but hopefully some news that will be sent on to you guys later on. But what else we are doing is we are in the process of make, making a new board. Um, so as you all know, or most of you may know, we came out with a board called the Jib recently, which has a press like this with no raised nose and tail. Um, actually, let's see if we have one. Oh, yes, we do. Here we go. Here's one of the prototypes, as you see. Kind of just a lot like the Dervish is the broken one, but one of our prototype boards. Um, we are actually now making a board similar to this, but without a nose and tail on it. So what we're going to do is, since a lot of people have been asking us, how do we make all these boards by hand, because we do do everything by hand. Each board is pressed individually, 12 hours in a press, and we press the wood, cut it out by ourselves, and do all the graphics. What we're going to do is a little webisode, starting off with the building of a press just like the one we have over there. Right. Right. First, what we got to do is if we look at the press right here, it has a top and a bottom. We make these out of uh, our 2x4s, um, not 2x4s, sorry, 2x6s or 2x8s. We make a pre, -de uh, pre designed setup. Jordan does all the engineering on that. And then we sand them down and fill, fill in the holes with Bondo so they fit together nice and perfectly. Alright, so what we have here is the design for the new board, as you can see, um, just this is what's going to be the uh, camber of the board, and we're going to build in concave um, by our varying, varying the heights of our different 2x6s. Uh, we have both the top and bottom of the press here, so what I have, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to glue this down onto this board just with some adhesive spray. We're going to cut it through the saw, cut down on our lines, and then sand it out to the right shape. And then we're going to use these two boards to actually lay out the rest of the uh, lengths on these, or the rest of the shapes on these boards right here. So, now that we have our uh, shape on, on the 2x6, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is cut it up on our saw, get this one cut up, I'll get it sanded down, and then we'll show you how to use this piece to actually lay out the rest so you can get that concave in the board. All right, so now that we've sanded down um, the middle pieces of our new jig, what we, can, what we have is so, if you look at our old one, we have uh, the, cam the concave in here as well as the camber. Uh, to get that in, what we do is we use varying heights of our pieces. So, right here we have, this is the bottom of the uh, jib press and this will be the bottom of the new unnamed board uh, that will be coming out very soon. Um, so basically what we do is we are going to be using these pieces of wood to draw on the other 2x6s that we have on the border on the bottom making each um, piece of wood a little bit taller than the one prior to it so that we get that kind of curve. Alright, so what we're going to be doing is, once again, is we're going to be taking our boards that we've previously cut out, these are for the center, and we're going to be putting them on our new boards. Uh, and we're going to be using those to trace the, the heights for all the rest of them. I'm not going to give you the exact heights that we use so that you can't copy our exact camber that we have, because we don't want you to have the same camber and concave that we have, otherwise you'll have the same product, and then it'll make me sad and I'll cry and all that jazz. But I, but you do want to, if you have, want to have that concave, you do want to make um, adjustments in the height uh, of which you have the next consecutive board so that you'll be able to get that uh, concave in there. So we're going to go ahead and mark these up, and um, yeah, all right. Now we have all of our pieces of wood uh, drawn out. Um, we have a total of seven pieces that we're going to put them together, slap them together um, to make our full jig on uh, an increasing and decreasing height depending on the top and the bottom. Um, the outermost of the 
bottom of the jig is the tallest part, uh, whereas on obviously the top, the outermost is the shortest part. So we have these rim drawn out accordingly. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, once again, I'm going to cut them all out of the bandsaw. Alright, so we have them all cut out now. We have to do a, they're just rough cuts. I mean, with some sand jobs on them, but I just want to give you a heads up just so you see, what you see what's going on. Um, if you look down the board, you can see this is the bottom of the board and we have the camber going this way and we also have the concave where the middle piece right here is the lowest piece and it goes up. Also here's the top and we have the opposite um, concave going on. Obviously when we flip it over they'll be the same to the mirror image. So what we're going to do, go ahead right now do is sand all these down just like we did the first pieces that we used to actually um, mark the rest of So what we have now is we have our completely sanded um, pieces of wood. And once again, it does have that camber in it, the piece on the uh, concave. The middle piece is lower than the rest. They're all nice and smooth, just like a baby's bottom. It's what you want. Uh, what you're going to end up having, what you end up having to do is you're going to end up sanding this out so it's really nice and smooth and get a uniform concavity. On the other side, what we're going to use is we're going to use uh, just Bondo or body filler and fill it in so you get really, really nice smooth camber and concave. Um, so what you do, we're going to line all these up on this piece of MDF. Uh, you're going to want a piece of, a solid piece of wood like this where you have uniform pressure throughout the entire board. Um, we're going to be screwing them together uh, board to board as well as boards to the bottom. So we're going to end up basically with a piece where did that go? Oh, right. piece like this where all of our boards are stuck together and then the MDF holding that all hasn't been completely finished yet. What we're going to do is I'm going to start working on the top. And once I'm done with the top, we'll get into how to sand these out, get the right, can uh, right concave you want, and how to fill in the top to get the right concave you want as well. Alrighty. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our uh, bottom uh, part of the jig, uh, jig setup. This is the one where your uh, centerpiece is the lowest. Uh, what we did was we marked out the basically all the seams. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be sanding this out to get the right concave. And I'm basically just going to use the seams um, that we marked with a sharpening marker to kind of aid me in making sure that I get the right camber uh, across the entire thing. So uh, it takes, some, takes a good amount of time. All right, so once we've sanded the entire board down, what we did is we sanded the uh, higher inside corner. Um, so if you want to pull around to this side, just look down. So what you see is we have a really nice, nice uh, camber in here. Uh, it's not camber, concave in here, sorry. Uh, where the initial height was right here and we sanded down to the lower region of the other 2 by, um, giving us that nice uh, concave. So now that we're done with this, we're going to go ahead and um, work on the top, which is going to be, instead of sanding, we're going to be using Bondo or any other body filler you want to use to kind of do the opposite and fill in the cracks. Alright, so here's the uh, top of our jig. Once again, it's the opposite. The top is the highest spot, the bottom is at the lowest spot. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Bondo or any other body filler to fill in the rest of it. So. We're going to take our stuff, like I say, you want to wear gloves because you're going to get it all over you. I always do. I'm a klutz, but that doesn't, doesn't matter. And you're going to, so you're just going to use it as just like wall putty filling in all those seams so you can get that nice curve. You're going to go back later filling it obviously a little bit better. You're going to do a few coats of this and you are going to sand it out to make once again that really nice concave. Okay, so coat one's done. Obviously I'm going to need to do another coat. Uh, we're going to let it dry completely. It only takes about a half hour to dry. Um, 
before you can sand it. I like to sand it in between each one. And for this one, which we're going to do is we're, you're going to want to see the uh, outside corner of each one of your pieces of wood. That way, or each one of your two bys. That way you know you got that nice uniform area. Your gaps are filling in. Right, the, the bond is filling in that inside corner and you don't have any air. What I'm going to do instead of letting it rest uh, for about a half hour, 45 minutes and then sanding it and then going for another coat. It's been about 15 minutes since the bond is dry enough for me to put on another coat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a big bash. I've been doing, I mean I've done a good amount of bond doing making these presses. So I feel comfortable doing a big batch. If you don't feel comfortable doing a big batch then do it in small uh, batches. But um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to add another layer on here, kind of make it really nice and smooth, um, do it fast, like I said, because it is, it does, it, after about 15 minutes, it's nice and dry, um, and this is just going to be kind of a filler coat, and I'm going to let it sit overnight, um, come back tomorrow and sand it down, uh, so that it has a long time to get nice and, really nice and dry for us, and then I can get a good sand job down on it, so. That's what we're going to go and do. Alright, so day two, bondo is dried up nice and hard. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do, first of all, no comments from me wearing the same clothes that I was wearing yesterday. That mainly goes out to family who's going to be watching <laughs> this. Um, Pete, Pete, sticky feet. Yes, I know. Um, so, what we're going to do is just go ahead and sand it down. Uh, like I said, how we were on the first press, this uh, the bottom, the bottom side of the press, we were sanding from the high side to the lower side, or the, the highest side of the next one inside. You're sanding the opposite direction on the top, where basically you want the outer edge of each two by to be seen. Now we have the bottom of top of our uh, jig done. Uh, the bottom part of the press is done as well. Um, both really smooth, uh, sanded really fine with some nice sandpaper. Like I said, you want to get as many bumps out as you can. We will be putting, uh, as you'll see in the next episode, we will be putting a small thin piece of uh, really, really pliable uh, wood in there so that it will bend and create make it so that we don't have any of the bumps that are in the press in there, but fundamentally it is very smooth. Um, as, so what you can do just to make sure that everything is lining up well is if we take the top of our press and lay it on the bottom of our press, uh, whoops, backwards, make sure you have them labeled which side's front, which side's back. Uh, because it is handmade, it will be a little bit different on either side, there's nothing you really can do about that. But like I said, once you have it in the vacuum bag and you have that, see that uh, thin piece of plywood, everything will really work out fine. So, what we have here is from the side, the top and the bottom, you can see fit really well with each other. There's a very small gap. That gap is supposed to be there. Uh, it's actually supposed to be a little bit thicker uh, once the board's in there, so it will fit and have the same radius on either side. And if you look at the front, you can see once again, we do still have that uh, concave in there. Um, so that the board has concave throughout the entire thing. So, now that we have finished making our first press for, the bro uh, for this new board that we actually don't have a name for yet, um, the next step will be laying that board up, going through the whole process of taking the bamboo uh, and fiberglass and epoxy them together, putting them in the vacuum bag, letting them sit overnight, and then cutting out the board. Um, look forward to seeing you later. Jordan should be with me then, uh, so that we'll be able to kind of do a full Stage 3 Rides crew um, webisode, and stay tuned for more.